Hey, welcome back everyone. It is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and in this video we are going to be talking about domain integrity. Now, I'm fairly confident in you guys. What we've studied about MySQL is probably enough to where you already have domain integrity. The reason I'm making this video is so that we cover all the details of integrity, for one, and for two, when someone says domain integrity, you're not like, duh, I don't know what you're talking about. Just because you might understand all the pieces of domain integrity doesn't mean you understand that those pieces build domain integrity, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> so once we start talking about it, it might make a little bit more sense. Domain integrity is essentially when our data fits what is appropriate or what is expected for a certain column. This requires us to define what's allowed and what's not allowed. That whole concept is known as domain. The proper data inside of a column contributes to domain integrity. So if we have a column and we're expecting a phone number, we want to make sure all of that data in that table for that column stores a phone number, not just random text or some a few numbers but not the whole thing. We want to ensure that the data is as close as possible to what's expected. So the domain establishes what's not allowed and what is allowed. So we want to make sure all of our data fits inside of here and it doesn't go too far this way or too far that way. This is kind of, this might make sense with numbers like not too low or not too high, but I'm just kind of drawing this generally. We got to make sure we fit within the rules. So we don't want to make something too long. We don't want to make it too short. We don't want to make it too high. We don't want to make it too low. Everything like that. So another way to think about it is this entire thing would be the possible values but we are only going to accept some of the values inside of this area right here. That is domain. Now with MySQL, there are a few ways we can enforce domain. The first is with a data type. This is by far the easiest way to get some level of domain on a column. That's because if you have something such as a numeric data type, that's automatically going to reject strings like string. That's because this is not a number, it's a string. It doesn't go inside of a numeric column. So data type is one way. Obviously the two constraints we talked about, not null and unique. These can also be used to help with the domain integrity because we can force every single row to have a value or for every single row to have a unique value. That further restricts the data. All of these are the simple way of protecting our domain. Now some database management systems have what's known as a check constraint. And these things are pretty cool, but unfortunately MySQL does not have these. That's when you can say something like, we want a value to be between 5 and 50, for example. There are ways to mimic this in MySQL, but that requires more advanced MySQL knowledge. So we're not going to dive into that right away. That means if we want to be very specific on what's allowed, like if we want to say, oh, just this data. So we could say something like, any phone numbers that fit a certain format. That's all going to have to be done with advanced MySQL or application logic. What does that mean though? Imagine a website, right? And you're signing up and you have to put in an email. And you just put some garbage in there that's not an email, clearly. Well, you can do things to make sure that that data is an email. For one, on the client side, you can make the input an email, which with HTML5, that's already gonna bark at you and tell you you're doing it wrong. Then, even if someone bypasses that by modifying the HTML, we can have server-side code, such as PHP, check the data and see, hmm, is this really an email? And if it is, then we can store it into the database. If it's not, we can return an error. So all of that goes outside of the database into the application. It's a separate thing. But just know that we can restrict data to be very specific. Not so easily with MySQL, although it is possible. So thank you guys. Hopefully this was a good overview of domain integrity. Obviously we're not supposed to dive in and conquer the whole concept of domain integrity. We're not going to get into this stuff or how to mimic check constraints in MySQL for a long time. <laughs> so let's start slow. Let's go with this. Hopefully that was helpful. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Also, one more thing. If you guys want to support this channel, please click subscribe and like this video. Thanks guys. See you in the next one.